Firstly, make sure CS is shut down and then search up GeForce Experience and in the top left, click drivers and click check for updates. As you can see, I have the latest drivers. If you don't, they'll pop up here. You'll have to download them, express install them and that's step one complete. Next thing to do is search up task manager, open it up here and then go to where it says startup apps. And as you can see, guys, if you've got a bunch of game launchers or programs, what you want to do is make sure to disable them by right clicking and click disable. Now, obviously, if you want specific apps to load up when you load your PC up, then and keep these enabled but in general this is completely personal preference but obviously the more of them that you disable the quicker your pc will load up and the less things they'll be going on in the background now as well as this if you finished using these apps during the day and now you're going to chill out and play some cs go into the bottom right hand corner where it says show hidden icons and then what you can do is you can just go through here so if you don't need discord just right click and click quit discord obviously if you need it then don't quit it because it might be how you talk to your mates when you play obviously you need steam on i've got obs and my microphone apps open you can even close like ghub because your mouse will still use whatever profile you were previously using there should only really be like four icons here and now you'd be ready to load up cs2 but firstly before we do that step number three is to reinstall cs2 to do that you got to load up steam obviously and then find where it says cs2 then right click it go to manage and you can click uninstall here now if you've got really bad internet and you don't want to reinstall the game if we go into properties as you guys can see here if we go to installed files currently i have cs2 on my c drive so i can't can't move it over but if you wanted to you just click move install folder and select your other drive and then click ok and the game would be moved over to your c drive it really does help if you have a decently fast c drive i mean that just goes without saying anyway guys like you want windows on like an m.2 or an ssd or something that's quick and speedy one other thing we can do here is go out to where it says general and then go down to launch options and put in here dash high this can just help with some more fps all you have to do now is close out of here another thing that's worth doing is going to dlc and as you guys can see here i was invited to the cs2 limited test and quite a few of you guys might have been as well so what you want to do is uncheck this and same as if you have this checked for whatever reason uncheck this as well unless you're actually using the workshop tools to make maps or things for the workshop uncheck these and then click x just so that it gets rid of any files that you don't need that's another reason why it's a good idea to reinstall the game so that you have the most up-to-date files now for step four search up nvidia control panel and once it's opened up click on manage 3d settings here and go to where it says program settings on the second tab now if we look through here for cs2 if you guys can't find it click the add button right here and then as you can see here it's a cs2.exe and click add selected program the main things we want to change are are the anisotropic filtering to application controlled anti-aliasing mode to application controlled low latency mode to off power management mode to prefer maximum performance texture filtering quality to high performance vertical sync you want to disable and turn off now as long as all of those settings are changed you're good to go so just click apply give it a second it'll do this little loading thing that'll then disappear and we can now close out of the nvidia control panel now we can finally load up cs2 so let's do that now the first thing you want to do is go into the settings in the top left and if we go to game as you can see here it says enable developer console make sure that yes is enabled otherwise you won't be able to do a bunch of stuff on cs another thing under the keyboard and mouse scroll down to ui keys and then change your console button to whatever is comfortable for you back at the main menu open up console and type in fps and actually it pops up as fps max and then what you want to do is click zero which mine is on anyway and now this will just basically unlock your game so it will play with the most amount of fps possible now if you want to actually see your fps you can open up console again and type in cl underscore show fps one but as you guys can see here especially when we load up a game like i really don't like the look of this and it's not very easy to keep track of so i'd much rather swap this to zero and then by clicking shift tab you can then go down to the bottom on the right where it says settings and turn the in-game fps counter on in whatever position you'd prefer I could just do top right. Oh, and I'd also recommend using high contrast color just because it's way easier to see. And as you can see at the main menu, we're currently locked to 116 FPS. Before we jump into a game real quick to check the in-game settings out, let's also just change our display settings real quick. So if you go over to video, as you guys can see, I'm currently on full screen windowed, but if you're playing, you want to be playing in full screen. This is so, so important. So many people will be playing in full screen windowed, which is like borderless, like I just was. But if you want the lowest amount of latency, you have to be playing in full screen, guys. I just use it when I'm recording certain things where I don't really care about that. But yeah, you want to be playing in whatever resolution you prefer. I'm just using my monitors max at the moment, but you can play stretched. I do have a video showing you guys how to do that. So check that out on my channel if you need to. But yeah, if you want your game to look clear as possible, just play in the max resolution that your monitor allows. And honestly, the most important thing here is just to check that you're playing in full screen every time you play. And then obviously pick the highest refresh rate that your monitor allows and then click apply. And now go over to advanced 
last video. Boost player contrast still doesn't really work, so I'm just keeping this disabled until it does work. Wait for V-Sync, of course, guys. If you don't know this by now, just never use this unless it's for a specific use case. Always have this disabled in a competitive game. Now, if you want the best FPS possible, obviously what you could technically do is just turn all of these to none or the lowest. Now, if you don't like the jaggedy effect that having no anti-aliasing gives, then you could use CMAA2, which just slightly gets rid of any of those issues. And honestly, especially if you're playing in a high enough resolution, this should be enough. Otherwise, you could play with this off. Then for global shadow quality, you really do want to have this on high, guys. Like, just because of the advantages that it gives you like if you have this low shadows will look like this and they're not necessarily going to be real time so yeah always have shadows on high but yeah obviously play around with this you could set it to medium and if your computer just really cannot handle this game even with all the other settings optimized then yeah just put this to low like at the end of the day you want to be able to like play and shoot and yeah if you can't do that because of your shadow settings then yeah just turn them to low model and texture again you could put this at low but i would say medium really is the lowest you want to go now for texture filtering mode this is actually a bit of a weird one some people get better fps if they have this higher some people get a better fps if they have this lower so try all of these out Try bilinear, try trilinear, try 2x, try 4x, try 8x. Just see what works best for you guys. For me, I like 8x. It makes the game look super nice. But just to be on the safe side, I'd recommend 4x just because, yeah, it's kind of in the middle. So try out 4x. If you're fine with that, maybe try 8, try 16. Just see what it does. See if you get more FPS, see if you get less FPS. It kind of depends on the system that you're playing on. For shader detail, you want to swap this to low. Same with particle details. Ambient occlusion, I recommend having it on medium. But if you really are struggling, then yeah, just have this disabled now for high dynamic range this is kind of up to you i don't really think performance changes too much but again just try it out performance technically should give you more performance but for some people it looks a bit weird if that's the case just swap it to quality but if you can i do recommend performance it just depends on if your game looks weird or not now guys for fidelity fx super resolution just turn this to disabled guys like it, it really just makes your game look super clear unless you're playing on like a super high resolution monitor and then you want to swap your game to like balanced or quality or something like that to basically use upscaling to give you more fps then yeah you'll never really need to use this so just keep it disabled but i mean let's be honest if you're playing on a super high resolution monitor most likely your pc is going to be able to keep up with that so this is a very small thing obviously if you just happen to have like a 4k monitor but your pc doesn't really work that well then yeah try out one of these quality or balance but otherwise if you're playing at like 1080 1440p or in stretch res then yeah just keep this disabled it's way better then for nvidia reflex low latency swap this to enable and then as you guys can see that is everything updated you don't need to click apply here just go back and check that your video settings are still in full screen and at your monitor's highest refresh rate 